Hey guys, it's Kay. Welcome back to my channel, The Organized Soprano. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and singer here in the Boston area, and I'm here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So today I'm gonna to give you a little bit of advice and we're gonna talk about five things you are probably doing wrong when you try to organize any space in your house or in your office or wherever. These are five pitfalls that I usually find people fall into when they're trying to declutter and organize their space. So um, let's get right to it. So the number one thing you're probably doing wrong is not decluttering first. You would think that when you were trying to organize your space, you could just move all the little pieces in things in organizers and that might do the job, but that usually is the last step you wanna do. The first thing you wanna do is take everything out of the space, and I mean everything. Every last bit of clothes out of the closet, everything out of the drawer, every, every you know little thing off the shelf you're trying to organize, take it all off and evaluate. Try to declutter everything that you can. You cannot, if the space is disorganized, especially if you haven't seen those things in the back, you might not need a lot of the stuff that's already in there. So the first step that a lot of people skip that you must not skip is declutter first. That's why when clients invite me over to help them, they go, oh, do I need to buy anything? And I'm like, no, don't buy anything. We will do that at the end if we need to. We might not even need to. So don't skip decluttering. It is a very important step. So the next thing people might not do as efficiently when they're organizing um, is after they've decluttered, they do not use or reuse organizing items that are already around in their house and they go out and just spend lots of money. I'm the first one to admit that buying organizing stuff is fun, okay? I used to work at the container store, that's where the bug hit. I found so many cool bins. I was like, ooh, clear drawer dividers, that's cool, let me buy 80,000 of those. Ooh, shoe boxes, let me buy 40,000 of those. You might not need it, it might not be necessary you might have things you can use as drawer organizers already in your house. If you've seen me before, you know I'm a big fan of the Apple boxes. I don't know what they're made of, but they're really, really tough and they make great drawer organizers. So if you have some like Apple iPhone boxes or some extra Mac boxes hanging around, use them as drawer organizers. They work really great. Maybe you have an extra box around that can be used as a bin without its lid. Take some time, rummage around your house, see if you have anything that can be repurposed and use that instead of going out and going shopping. So let's say you do need to go out and shop and buy some organizing solutions. That's really fun, that's really great, right? Be careful that you're not buying items that are just form over function. Be careful of falling into the trap where you can buy something that has a really cute lid, but the lid is really difficult to take off, or the lid doesn't stay on at all, but the lid is really cute, right? When you're in the store, take the lid on and off, or, or lift the lid on, like up and down. See if it's easy to, for you to manage. If you love the thing and it's really cute, ask yourself if you're really gonna go through the trouble to like unlatch it and open it every time you need to use it. So make sure that they are functional as well as attractive if you need them to be attractive. If you don't need them to be attractive, just have it be practical. It's no big deal, it's organizing. It's supposed to make your life more efficient, not necessarily cuter, if both are there, that's cool, but like right now you wanna focus on efficiency. Number four seems really stupid, but I find that this is a problem a lot more of the time than I'd like to admit, and that is putting small things in large containers. The more voluminous a container is, the more, the larger the things that should go inside. So let's say you have a really big bin, that's great for some like decorative towels or some pillows or something like that that's gonna actually fit the size of the container. It is not a good size container for a bunch of little tiny toys. That is definitely gonna create the problem of the things that are in the bottom. So I often find that this applies to things like drawers a lot. Like people are filling really, really deep drawers with things like socks and underwear. And if they, if they'll, we'll go through and we'll declutter and I'm like, have you worn this underwear in the past year? And they're like, well, I haven't been able to get to that because it's been in the bottom. So you want to complement the size of a container with the size of the items and the shape of the items that you're putting in. So in like say a really shower, shallow drawer is a great place for underwear and socks and a really deep drawer is a great place for things that are more voluminous like sweaters and pants. So you wanna stop putting little things in large containers, you know what I mean? And the last barrier to an organized home that I see people making, the mistake I see people making is not organizing for the person they are, they're organizing for the person they want, want to be. When you're trying to organize your home, you have to take into account your own personal 
habits. If you are somebody who just loves to throw their coat on a hook at the end of the day, putting them in the closet on a hanger is probably not realistically going to be something that you are going to do. So providing yourself a hook where you can stick your coat at the end of the day is going to make your life a lot easier than trying to force yourself to be that person who opens the closet door grabs the hanger, puts the coat on, puts the hanger back in the closet and closes the door. That's a long process. And if realistically you're not going to do that process, make it easier for yourself by acknowledging your own habits and trying to organize around that instead of organizing for the person you want to be. This is why I talk to people a lot when I'm going through their space. I talk to people a lot about their daily routine and about their habits and exactly what steps they take because that helps me decide on an organization system that might work for them. It might necessarily work for me, but it might work a little better for them because that's the person who they are. So always acknowledge who you are, be yourself and organize for yourself because there's only one you. So what are some things that stopped you from getting organized? So let me know in a comment down below on the pitfalls that you fell into when you're trying to get organized. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I publish all kinds of home decor, organizing and dog videos and singing videos every week. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you don't, give it a big thumbs down, whatever, I don't care. I hope you guys are having a good morning, great evening, great afternoon, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.